السلام علیکم مائی نیم از ڈاکٹر راشد پروفیسر ڈاکٹر راشد ضیاء انفارچونیٹلی ڈو ٹو کرونا وی ہیو ٹو کم بیک ٹو دی آن لائن لیکچرس ٹوڈے وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ڈسکس دی مین نیوٹریشن ان چلڈرن وچ از اے very common problem in Pakistan and in the rest of the world so we'll see what is malnutrition uh, approximately 3.5 million per year mothers and children died due to underlying cause of uh, undernutrition which is one of the commonest cause of death in mothers and children more than 55 million that is 10% of the children are wasted and less than 19 millions are severely wasted this is the map of the world uh, which showing the south A- asia and uh, sub saharan africa have the highest share of young children who are underweight and the black shows uh, where there are 30 to 35 9% and uh, of uh, children with uh, malnutrition you can uh, see uh, these areas of india pakistan bangladesh sri lanka afghanistan and then uh, in the african countries this is the graph shows vitamin and iron deficiency are also prevalent among children less than 5 years uh, these are the latin american and caribbean uh, the the middle east and north africa they are about 63% and south asia showing is uh, 76% of iron deficiency and about 40% are uh, uh, showing vitamin a deficiency and similarly sub saharan africa showing 60% of iron deficiency and 32% of vitamin a deficiency so the whole graph shows uh, that in addition to malnutrition they have uh, severe vitamin a and iron deficiency this is a, a graph showing malnutrition it is a uh, 55% and they get acute respiratory infection 19% diarrhea 19% measles 7% malaria 5% uh perinatal causes 18% so the malnourished children get uh, more than the normal share of their acute infections uh, and the most common are acute respiratory infection diarrhea measles and malaria data from pakistan shows 36% of children are underweight before the current uh, floods we have the researchers claim that up to 44% of children of rural, rural areas are stunted that's been they have less height and weight a survey by the world health organization the number of the under weight preschool children 0 to 5 years of age is 40% so the children less than 5 years of age are under weight in, uh, are about 40% so this is a data from pakistan showing a severe problem children especially under 5 years of age what 
that is malnutrition it uh, is derived from the malus that is which is a bad and nutrient means nourish so it includes both undernutrition that is the deficiency of the one or more essential nutrients or overnutrition and an excess of nutrients or nutrients we have seen recently in the upper class uh, that the children are getting overweight especially in covert affected years uh, they spend most of the time uh, within the house uh, sitting not much exercise uh, and uh, eating too much uh, food uh, so that leads to overweight so obesity in children is a major problem in upper class in pakistan and in uh, rich countries like uh, america and european countries macronutrients uh, like uh, carbohydrates lipids proteins uh, and water needed for energy self multiplication and repair the micronutrients are trace elements vitamins and nutrients they are essential for metabolic uh, processes so the nutrients are divided into macronutrients and micronutrients and both are essential for the normal human beings adaptation to starvation and energy source depletion of glycogen uh, stores leads to increase gluconeogenesis that means increase the glucose and decreases the insulin uh, glycerol amino acids lactate and pyruvate fatty acid oxidation and ketone bodies uh, utilization is uh, decreased uh, and there is a, a reduced uh, protein catabolism and gluconeogenesis in continuation of the adaptation to starvation and uh, the fluid and the electrolytes are also affected there is a inhibition of sodium pump so there is a increase in intracellular sodium and that takes water with it and the total body water also increases increase urinary loss of potassium calcium phosphate magnesium and zinc and the total body potassium decreases there that can causes a hypotonia apathy impaired cardiac function due to hypokalemia refeeding syndrome means that the metabolic disturbances occur at this point starvation causes loss of lean muscle mass water and minerals the phosphorus also decreases carbohydrate refeeding increases the insulin release the glucose uptake increases the hypophosphatemia and the red cell atp is decreases and the potassium magnesium glucose and thiamine also decreases now we come to the classification of uh, malnutrition the who classification is uh, defined as the presence of uh, edema of both feet or uh, severe wasting 70% of weight for height or length 
or less than three standard deviation or if there are clinical signs of severe malnutrition. This is the WHO classification when the presence of edema of the both feet or severe wasting. The severe wasting is defined as as 70 percent of the weight for height or length or less than three standard deviations there is another classification called gomes classification if the weight is more than 90 percent of the expected weight no malnutrition The first degree malnutrition is uh, when the weight is uh, 75 to 90 percent of the expected weight. The second degree malnutrition is when the weight is 60 to 70 percent of the expected weight. And the third degree malnutrition is uh, when the weight is less than 60 percent of the expected weight. So if the weight is more than 90 percent of the expected expected weight then it is considered as uh, normal and there is no malnutrition so the malnutrition is further classified into first degree second degree and the third degree as, as I have told you then there is a, a modified Gomes classification if the weight is more than 80 percent of the expected weight then this is called normal with without any malnutrition in the first degree the weight is 70 to 80 percent of the expected weight in the second degree malnutrition the weight is 60 to 70 percent of the expected weight and in the third degree malnutrition the weight is less than 60 percent of the expected weight this is slightly modified and from the previous classification and this is known as a modified Gomes classification. Waterloo classification is another where there is a way for age expressed as percentage if if the height for age is less than 90 percent then then is normal and if less than 80 percent caught chronic malnutrition if between 80 to 120 caught stunted but no malnutrition and if it is more than 120 it is caught stunted and obese if height for age is more than 90 percent it causes acute malnutrition and 80 to 120 it's normal and more than 120 is obese but we usually follow the who classification which i have already explained to you There is another classification called welcome classification which is based on uh, edema, either edema present or not. If the weight for age is 80 to 60 percent of standard and edema is present, it is called kosher core. If edema is uh, not present, it is known as uh, pondral retardation. If weight for age is less than 60 percent of standard and edema is present it is called marasmic kosher core and if edema is not present it is known as marasmus so in kosher core the main symptom is edema and in marasmism or marasmic children the edema is absent There is another classification called uh, Harvard classification. If the weight falls 50 percent, 
इफ इफ द वेट फॉल्स ऑन द फिफ्टी सेंटाइल इट इज कॉल्ड हेल्दी चाइल्ड ग्रेड वन इफ द वेट इज ऑन सेवेंटी फर्स्ट टू एटी परसेंट ऑफ द फिफ्टी परसेंटाइल इट इज कॉल्ड ग्रेड वन ग्रेड टू इफ द वेट इज सिक्सटी वन टू सेवेंटी परसेंट ऑफ द फिफ्टी परसेंटाइल इट इज ग्रेड टू ग्रेड थ्री इफ द वेट इज फिफ्टी वन टू सिक्सटी परसेंट ऑफ द फिफ्टी परसेंटाइल इट इज ग्रेड थ्री एंड ग्रेड फोर इज इफ द वेट इज फिफ्टी ऑफ द फिफ्टी सेंटाइल सो ग्रेड फोर इज वेन द वेट इज लेस दैन द हाफ ऑफ द फिफ्टी परसेंटाइल जर्नल क्लासीफिकेशन इज वेन वी मैयर द मिड आर्म सरकमफ्रेंस विद ए मेरिन टेप एट ट्वेल्व मंथ्स द नॉर्मल रीडिंग इज सिक्सटी पॉइंट फाइव सेंटीमीटर बिटवीन ट्वेल्व टू फोर्टी एट मंथ्स इट इज ट्वेल्व पॉइंट फाइव टू सिक्सटीन पॉइंट फाइव सेंटीमीटर एंड द कट ऑफ पॉइंट इज सेवेंटी फाइव परसेंट ऑफ द एक्सपेक्टेड मिड आर्म सरकमफ्रेंस If less than the cut-off point, it less than 14 centimeter. This is a diagnosed as malnourished child. So the measurement of the mid-arm circumference with a measuring tape. It shows three colors: red, yellow, and green. And the normal values I have given. So if The cut-off point is 75 percent of the expected mid-arm circumference. Then it is known as uh, diagnosed as malnourished. The skin fold thickness also measures, uh, and it is measured by the Harpenton caliper, and it, the triceps or the back of the shoulder muscles are used the normal reading is 9 to 11 mm and if the reading is less than 9 mm it is called known as a malnourished child so skin fold thickness also gives you the measurements of a malnourished child with the help of a harpenton caliper caliper there is another method called quick strip special tape having colors on it as i have told you the yeah, uh, up to the green color when the reading of the mid arm circumference is comes in a green uh, color it is normal if it comes in a yellow color it is called borderline malnutrition Usually the reading are between 14 to 12 centimeter, and if it comes into the red color, it is usually less than 12 centimeter and diagnosed as malnourished. There is another way to calculate the malnourished uh, obese or normal child, and that is a body mass index. that is the uh, weight in kilogram divided by height in meter square if it is less than 12 uh, 16 it is called malnourished if more than 25 it is known as obese and between 16 to 25 we called it a, a normal child so body mass index also give you a, a how to calculate uh, the how to diagnose a malnourished or obese or a normal child these are the photographs uh, of uh, of different uh, children showing severe malnutrition and uh, the do we can see the count count their ribs uh, and head usually maintain its growth but rest of the body is malnourished you can sh- see this child is severely malnourished but the head circumference is normal this child has puffiness and edema so this is 
he is suffering from kosher cord and he is suffering from rasmate you can see they are wasting around the buttocks uh, you can see grossly wasted uh, the uh, lower and the upper limbs uh, and and the chest uh, in this child the both legs are edematous and he is suffering from kosher uh, from uh, kosher core so these are different photographs showing severe marasmic children and kosher core children what is the etiology of malnutrition the primary malnutrition are due to failure of lactation when the mother is unable to feed their children uh, the second is the ignorance of weaning that's mean when you start weaning around about 5 to 6 months of age they not start at that time and delay the weaning and keep of giving uh, diluted milk poverty when they can't afford to buy uh, food and milk the cultural pattern and the food fades when the uh, certain customs when they give them very diluted milk or no solids or very uh, diluted uh, um, uh, and low quality food lack of immunization and primary care these children get uh, severe infections like measles upper respiratory tract infection meningitis lack of family planning uh, if the mother is uh, having a children uh, child every year then she is unable to feed uh, the baby and obviously uh, due to size of the family they can't provide them a good food the secondary causes of malnutrition are parasitic infestation when they have worms in the intestine measles whooping cough uh, primary tuberculosis urinary tract infections then if they have a congenital problems like a congenital heart disease cyanotic and asynotic or urinary tract anomalies like posterior uh, um, urethral valve or bilateral or unilateral um, Neutral stenosis of the lacrimal canal, giardiasis, lactose intolerance, celiac disease, uh, TB of the intestine, cystic fibrosis uh, are known cause diseases which causes uh, uh, malnutrition. And then there are rare causes which includes inborn error of metabolism. the most common is uh, galactosemia so these are the different uh, causes uh, some uh, are considered as a primary malnutrition when you not get enough food and secondary malnutrition when you get diseases uh, and uh, either congenital or acquired which leads to malnutrition this graph this uh, picture shows you a vicious cycle when you get a repeated pregnancy and you have a reduced uh, inadequate food and health care then you have a repeated uh, birth of children and they are underweight and they get uh, repeated frequent infections uh, and they get uh, stunted uh, childhood and these leads to adolescent which are also stunted so this is a vicious cycle uh, of a, a family when they have too much uh, uh, children in a very small uh, uh, time period so as i have said uh, the malnutrition there are two major classification of malnutrition but one is a uh, kosher core the other is uh, marasmic 
Marasmus in Kwashar call which is the name derived from the Ghanaian dialect uh, meaning the first uh, second after birth of the second baby the first baby is deprived uh, from the breastfeeding which is the only source of protein so they are under weight uh, and edema is always present thin lean muscles uh, fat is present hair changes are present they are fine straight uh, sparse and discolored so in kwashar core main reason of reason is a, a repeated pregnancies when the first child is deprived from lactation and that is the only source of protein and they develop hypoalbuminemia which leads to edema and the muscle mass is lost and fat is present uh, but the hallmark of the features is edema and they get hair changes which are um, are present as uh, the hair become fine and straight sometime curly and also discolored the next variety is marasmus uh, which is the word derived from the greek uh, maras ma- so which means uh, wasting due to dietary deficiency or severely restricted food intake Uh, they are extremely underweight uh, the weight is below than 60% of the expected weight uh, edema is always absent this is the main differentiating feature from kosher core muscle wasting with a loss of subcutaneous fat uh, and no hair changes similarly in kosher core the the appetite poor appetite uh, and they are anorexic uh, but in marasmus uh, they have a good appetite uh, in kosher core they are flanky paint dermatitis uh, they can have a mouth ulcers ulcers on the on the hands and feet uh, they can have hypo or hyperpigmentation Uh, so the skin changes are present in kosher core but in marasmus uh, the skin is normal the children with kosher core are miserable looking and apathetic uh, whereas the appearance of uh, marasmic children is like a monkey face uh, or little old man face but they are alert faces so they resemble like uh, an old man or a monkey uh, in kosher core the liver and large uh, there is a fatty infiltration of the liver and that increases the size of the liver but in marasmus uh, there is uh, no hepatomegaly initial assessment of uh, a severely malnourished child you always take the history the recent intake of fluid and food usual diet before the current illness breastfeeding when was weaning started duration and frequency of diarrhea and vomiting type of diarrhea bloody or watery and loss of uh, appetite time when urine was last passed uh, family circumstances literacy level socio economical status housing family members vaccination status chronic cough history of chronic cough contact with their tuberculosis uh, like uh, grandparents uh, recent contact with the measles and the uh, milestones uh, achieved on examination Uh, the proper exposure of the child is essential a uh, look general appearance and look uh, they look as stunted wasted uh, edematous alert apathetic or emaciated anthropometric measurements that are the height weight head circumference mid arm circumference uh, plot in the centile chart
signs of dehydration and shock cold hands uh, absent tears uh, slow capillary refill time weak and rapid pulse hypo or hyperthermia head depressed open fontanelle fine spares hair hypo or hyperpigmented easily pluckable hands severe pop severe palmer pallor clubbing pulse widening of the wrist which indicates uh, rickets also eyes signs of vitamin e deficiency ear discharge from the ear may be a serosaginous or purulent uh, neck shows quieter or leaf nodes and large mouth shows angular stomatitis oral hygiene is poor gum bleeding or hyperplasia due to vitamin b12 deficiency uh, delayed dentition tongue shows flat and loss of papilla or red and beefy tongue ulcers within the mouth or oral thrush skin color whether dry or lusterless any exudative changing like resembling severe burn often exist with secondary infection infestation including candida petechial hemorrhages and bruises chest she the shape of the chest prominent costochondral junction recurrent rosary crowding of the ribs and harrison circles are signs of severe vitamin d deficiency cvs shows signs of a heart failure edema jaundice skin changes of question core abdomen distended and protuberant a tone of the muscle is decreased vowel sounds are absent and may be a tender hepatomegaly this is a child suffering from uh, kosher core you can see the skin changes and also there is a hyper and hypopigment area there is an edema of the feet and the legs and also face uh, and the changes are as well on the head the their hair are curly and sparse uh, and the child is apathetic and uh, not uh, responding to stimuli and lethargic the investigations uh, we start from the full blood count and the peripheral smear for the malarial parasite uh, we check for the blood glucose level we do a septic screening if there is a suspicion of infection and we check stools for the cyst ova and for culture and sensitivity and also fat globulin in cases of uh, mal absorption urine microscopy and culture and sensitivity serum electrolytes uh, calcium phosphate alkaline phosphates serum albumin and total proteins chest x-ray and mon to test uh, to rule out tuberculosis and exclude hiv if there is a family history of uh, hiv infections the complications of malnutrition are hypoglycemia hypothermia hypokalemia hyponatremia heart failure dehydration and shock infections like uh, bacterial viral and thrush the management uh, is divided into initial treatment which is known as an emergency treatment a rehabilitation and a follow up in the first week which is known as a stabilization period and next 2 to 6 weeks uh, known as a rehabilitation Uh, we treat the hypoglycemia hypothermia dehydration electrolytes infection micronutrients uh, but no iron 
iron is added later on initial feeding catch up growth after second week sensory stimulation throughout the treatment and follow up after the first stabilization period initial treatment which is known as the first phase usually 2 to 7 days fluid and electrolyte balance iv infusion indicated in a severely malnourished child with a circulatory collapse you can use also nasogastric feeding half strength dilute solution with a 5% dextrose or half normal saline which is a 0.45% with 5% dextrose fluid is used and give iv fluid as a 15 ml per kg over 1 hour for initial resuscitation measure the vital sign like heart rate pulse rest respiratory rate at the start and every 5 to 10 minutes if signs of improvement then repeat iv infusion as 15 ml per kg over 1 hour then switch to oral or nasogastric rehydration uh, fluid initial refeeding uh, with starter f 75 that means 75 calories per 100 ml if the child fails to improve improve assume the child has a septic shock give maintenance iv fluid that is 4 ml per kg per hour after the initial uh, resuscitation uh, while waiting for the blood results transfuse fresh blood whole blood 10 ml per kg slowly over 3 hours bed cell if he is in failure and usually 10 ml per kg start antibiotic if you suspect uh, infection if the child come out of shock then start 70 ml per kg of ringer lactate over 5 hours in infants and over 2 hours in children reassess the child every 1 to 2 hours as soon as the child can drink give ors solution reassess after 6 hours in infants and 3 hours in children classify the dehydration and then choose the appropriate plan a b or c to continue treatment if available add selenium and iodine a uh, solution stored in sterilized bottle in fridge discard if it turns cloudy add 20 ml of concentrated electrolyte or mineral solution to each 1000 ml of uh, milk feed correction of hypoglycemia prevention by feeding every 2 to 3 hours per day treatment in a conscious child 50 ml of 10% glucose or sucrose orally in unconscious child 5 ml per kg of 10% glucose iv followed by 50 ml of 10% glucose or sucrose by nasogastric tube Marasmic in infants and children are more at risk of hypothermia if underarm temperature is less than 35 or 95 35 centigrade or 95 Fahrenheit then the child is rewarmed by kangaroo method or by warm blanket and lamp method
कंट्रोल ऑफ इन्फेक्शन कंट्रोल ऑफ इन्फेक्शन माइल्ड इन्फेक्शन वी यूजली गिव को ट्रेमेक्साजोल बी डी फॉर फाइव डेज इन सवियर इन्फेक्शन विद कम्प्लीकेशन वी गिव एम्पिसन फिफ्टी मिलीग्राम पर किलोग्राम आई बी सिक्स आवरली फॉर टू डेज और अमोक्सिसन फिफ्टीन मिलीग्राम पर किलोग्राम ओरली फॉर फाइव डेज एंड एड आल्सो जेंटामाइसिन सेवेंटी सेवन पॉइंट फाइव मिलीग्राम पर किलोग्राम आई वी फॉर ओ डी फॉर सेवन डेज टू कंट्रोल बोथ ग्राम पॉजिटिव एंड ग्राम नेगेटिव इन्फेक्शन मीजल्स वैक्सीनेशन इफ द चाइल्ड इज सिक्स मंथस ओल्ड एंड नॉट इम्यूनाइज और इफ द चाइल्ड इज मोर दैन नाइन मंथस ओल्ड एंड हैज बीन वैक्सीनेटेड बिफोर मोबेंडाजोल हंड्रेड मिलीग्राम पर ओरली फॉर फाइव डेज फॉर वॉम इन्फेस्टेशन ओ आर एस सोल्यूशन फॉर सवियरली मैन नरिश चिल्ड्रन मैन नरिश चिल्ड्रन डेफिशेंट इन पोटासियम एंड आर एबनॉर्मली हाई सोडियम सो ओ आर एस शुड कंटेन हाई पोटासियम एंड लो सोडियम then the standard who recommended solution magnesium zinc and copper should also be given in addition to the oral rehydration which is a special solution in these children which contain more sodium but less more potassium but less sodium the re so mole is a solution which is specially designed uh, for man nourish children with severe dehydration the composition of the re so mal is glucose 125 millimole per liter sodium 45 millimole per liter potassium 40 millimole per liter chloride 70 millimole per liter citrate 70 millimole per liter magnesium 3 millimole per liter zinc 0.3 millimole per liter and copper 0.045 millimole per liter and osmolarity is around 300 milli osmol per liter so this is a special solution uh, made uh, for a severely dehydrated uh, man now these children which contain you can see uh high glucose but low sodium and high potassium in addition to magnesium zinc and copper you can give multivitamins uh, like b1 b6 nicotinic acid b6 b12 b5 b6 uh, biotin folic acid and also fat soluble vitamin which are vitamin a d e and k in the amount which is written as amount per liter of the liquid diet the types of the formula feed are usually which gives you 75 kilo calorie used during the initial phase and the next phase is f100 which gives you 100 kilo calories per lit 100 ml used during the rehabilitation phase we give less calories during the initial phase but more during the rehabilitation phase Feed, feeding after the appetite improves the, the initial phase of treatment ends when the child becomes hungry and now transfer to f100 
diet with an equal amount of F100 for two days before increasing volume offered at each meal. Initially, we give F75 and then in the recovery phase, we give F100. You make a type of the feed, record the food intake, what type of feed has been given, the amount offered and taken must be recorded accurately after each feed and deducted from the total intake. Once a day, the energy intake for the last 24 hours should be determined and compared with the child weight. Dietary management should be for 2 to 3 weeks. Calories are given as 120 to 140 calories per kilogram per day, which includes protein 3 to 5 gram per kilogram per day, elemental iron 3 to 6 milligram per kilogram per day in the form of ferrous sulfate and vitamin A 300,000 units initially than 1500 units per day. Vitamin D 4000 international units per day, vitamin K 5 mg intramuscular or IV once only, folic acid 5 mg on day 1 and then 1 mg every day, copper 0.3 mg per kilogram per day. Basic principle of dietary management is improve the nutritional level of the child as quickly as possible by providing a diet with a sufficient energy, producing food and high quality proteins. Initially, initial refeeding is usually done by frequent small feeds of low osmolarity and low lactose then you will give oral or nasogastric uh, feeds never give parental preparation because it is expensive and also not give the better results than oral or nasogastric feed usually 100 calories per kilogram per day continuous breastfeeding if the child is on breastfeeding Increase each successive feed by 10 ml until some feeds remain uneaten. Assess the progress by weighing the child every morning before feed and plot the weight of the child. Calculate the weight again every third day. If the weight gain is poor, that means less than 5 gram per kilogram per day, check whether the intake targets are being met. Good weight gain if it is more than 10 gram per kilogram per day. Sensory stimulation provide uh, the tender loving care of the mother or the caretaker, a cheerful stimulating environment, a structural play therapy for 15 to 30 minutes per day, physical activity as soon as the child is well enough, maternal involvement as much as uh, possible. Criteria for transfer to the nutritional rehabilitation when they are eating well, improvement of mental state, sits, crawl, stands or walk, normal temperature, no vomiting, diarrhea or edema, gaining weight more than 5 gram per kilogram body weight per day on a 3 consecutive days. Nutritional rehabilitation, infants less than 24 months uh, fed exclusively on liquid and semi-solid food, older children given uh, solid food. Feeding less than 2 years, uh, you give them mostly the milk and the semi-solid diet. And if the children are more than two years old, introduce solid 
foods local food should be fortified to increase their content of energy mineral and vitamins oil added to increase the energy content mineral and vitamin mix used in the f100 milk should be added after cooking other ingredients like dried skimmed milk may be also added to increase the protein content supplementation of the food with folic acid and iron daily weight and plot on a graph mark the point that is equivalent to one standard deviation usually weight gain is a 10 to 15 uh, gram per kilogram per day how we can prevent the malnutrition it is by the education of the mother counseling regarding family planning and spacing between the children promotion of breastfeeding education of the parents regarding immunization of uh, children thank you very much i hope this will increase your knowledge about uh, malnutrition if you have any question please uh, you can uh, send me a message uh, my mobile number is 03800440973 you can whatsapp me the number is same or you can email me my email address is rzia56 at hotmail dot com Thank you very much for your attention to the office.